I'm doing an experiment. This is my backyard studio shed where I normally shoot YouTube videos, meaning product B-roll and my on-camera stuff. But today, I'm going to set up a different kind of look, a cinematic one like you might see in a movie. And of course, I'm shooting on an iPhone. The sun is shining, it's a nice day, and the look I'm going for in the scene is using this window as a source light, so using the sun to light the scene. And this is the same window on the outside of the shed. The problem though, of course, is the sunlight moves and clouds are predicted later today too. But before we get to that, here is the shot with only the house lights on in the shed. And by the way, I'm shooting in cinematic mode here on the iPhone, but this is obviously not a cinematic look. So now we'll open the window and let natural sunlight in. So here we've got the house lights mixed with window light, which the exposure is better, though it's still not a good look. But by simply turning the house lights off and using the window light as a single source, we're starting to make some progress. And depending on what you're doing, this simple approach might work. But here I wanna go with a little more dramatic look. So that means adding a light outside the window. First thing I'm doing is setting up a C-stand to hold the light. And I'm using a Fresnel light from Falcon Eyes here, which means it has a lens and you can focus the light, almost like a spotlight. Now note, in a perfect world, I would put a shot bag on the stand to help secure it, but I don't have one at home, so I'm living dangerously. This is a fairly large fixture, but the nice thing is there is no external ballast. It's all built into the light, which is great and keeps it nice and simple to use. And so the weatherman was right, and as predicted, it's now gotten cloudy. This makes using an artificial light for the scene even more important. And I'm adding the included barn doors to it, which helps shape the light and also allows you to easily add diffusion, etc. And as I mentioned, this is a Fresnel. So you power it on and then you twist this knob to widen or narrow the beam. I'm making it as narrow as I can to make the light as intense as I can. It's a 200 watt, so it's bright, but it's not crazy bright like an HMI. And so here is how that looks just falling off the truck. And it definitely has a dramatic look, but it needs more work. So I'll turn this backlight on to put some light on the gimbals and on the table. It's subtle, but it adds a little more depth to the shot. I also want to create a little more separation between her and the dark background. And so I'm adding a kicker light. You can see that now on her right arm, frame left. It's as if the light is coming in from an opposite window. And now this is starting to look pretty good. But one thing I like to do, especially with iPhone footage, is add a softening filter. This is a Hollywood Black Magic filter. The great thing about it is it really only affects the skin and then subtly blooms the highlights. And it's a subtle look in general, especially using this 1H strength, but that's something I do like. Less is more here. Remember, iPhones bake in a lot of sharpness to the image, which makes it look very digital. So adding a filter like this, especially when you're going for a more narrative look, is important. Now this is looking good, I like it. It's a hard light look, which you do see in movies, especially movies from the past, versus a soft light look, which is more popular today. Though it is a little bit sourcey. So to fix that and find a happy medium, I added diffusion to the barn doors. This will soften the light, but I left the beam very narrow because I still want the intensity. As a side note, most people would probably use a frame here to soften the light, but I don't have one and so this way still works fine. So now with the diffusion, the light spreads out some, but still has intensity. Here it is compared with no diffusion on the light. And then here is the final look, which I think looks very, dare I say, cinematic. cinematic. Now, just for the heck of it, and to compare it to a traditional camera, I shot the same scene with my Blackmagic Pocket 4K. And this was shot at a different time of day, so the ambient light is a little bit different. And then here that look is with the Hollywood Black Magic filter. On this camera, you see the filter working more than you do on the iPhone. And here I think it looks good either way. So really to me, the camera is just one part of the cinematic puzzle. And it's not the most important part. That would be you, the filmmaker. How you shoot, light, color grade, and put it all together to tell a story. For the iPhone cinematic mode footage, I used my subtly cinematic LUTs and film convert nitrate to create the look. 
So that in combination with shooting 24 frames per second, the way you compose the shot, the lens choice, the filters you use, and the way you light it. Everything works together to ultimately create a cinematic look. Now, of course, better cameras will definitely create higher end, better images. And it's worth noting here that the iPhone was shooting 8-bit 420 HEVC, and the Blackmagic camera was shooting 12-bit RAW. So that's a huge difference. But forgetting the technical mumbo jumbo for just a moment, in the end, they both look pretty darn cinematic. Thanks for watching. This is Blake Calhoun. Please like, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.